Welcome back to this ongoing series for Stellaris and how to play it. My name is Acepec and I'm going to be guiding you through all of the mechanics that are in Stellaris and how to get a better grasp on the game. If you haven't done so already, I highly recommend you to go and check out the Stellaris Basics video. This is on the 3.1 patch, but that should not affect you in any way because the early game in Stellaris between 3.1 and 3.2 haven't changed all that much. And we shouldn't see any major changes to the in-game mechanics for quite some time. With that out of the way, let's dive into the mechanics of the early game in Stellaris. Now, last time we went over the basics, such as some of the basic resources within the game, as well as setting up your initial um, ships for exploration, etc. We also got a bunch of additional alloys by downgrading some of our ships. And that basically means that we have all the resources needed in order to dive into into the grander scope of the galaxy. Now let's go over some of these things that we see on our screen and why they are important. First of all, we have this little icon called an anomaly, and as you can see, it will light up the location of it. As you can see, this is a challenging anomaly, which means it will take a certain amount of time in order to do this. And as you can see, there's also amount of research progress. Research progress basically means that it takes a certain amount of skill for our scientists in order to complete it. Right now it's challenging, which means it will take about a year to uh, do this particular anomaly and we can get a bunch of bonuses out of it in the end the higher the difficulty the longer it it takes but also the skill of our scientist is important in this particular case the higher the skill level of our scientist the easier it is for them to complete the task at hand and of course if we want to swap out a different scientist we can always use the change scientist button to swap somebody out and they're currently already surveying let's go ahead and survey and let's open Open up our outliner and see that we are currently have two science ships online as well as a construction ship now this construction ship is really important in the early game as uh, it, it allows us to do the initial expansion of our empire it allows us to build settlements or necessarily settlement stations in particular systems that allow us to claim them this is an underlying mechanic for every single type of empire in the game and is a core system that you will need anyway let's go and right click on the system where our first science ships are and move it over here this basically means that as soon as as soon as our science ships are done surveying every single planet in the system, you can note it by having the uh, all the pl the planet names that still need to be surveyed in gray and ones that are already surveyed in white with a little box around it. Basically, it allows us to gauge uh, where they are with the surveying process. Regardless, the construction ship will now move out towards the system and basically get ready to. Uh, claim it, but also to generate the resources that are in said system. We can also see that there are a bunch of resources available in the system, namely the trade value, a exotic gas, which is a strategic resource, and we will get into that particular item in a later episode, as well as a sensor range, uh, uh, a s uh, physics research, and some minerals. It looks like we've found some uh, some contacts from a other empire on a planet somewhere, and we will uh, see well how that things will impact us in the near future. In the meantime, though, we see our science ship moving over towards this system. And as soon as we enter the system, we now know what's going on here. We see that there are two planets and an asteroid belt, and this science ship will continue onwards to survey everything. And of course, as a refresher, we can always shift, click, survey and basically say uh, we want to survey this after this and basically it's just setting up um, the necessary next steps for our survey so at the top of our screen we now are now presented with traditions traditions are a system that basically allow you to specialize your empire through this particular menu now if we go to any of these boxes we can go ahead and select these this is very similar to say the civilization series where in the late game you are uh, have the opportunity to specialize your empires and the same thing applies here as well we can go ahead and select and basically we have all of these traditions available and basically Basically, depending on what you need at that moment in time, uh, you can select one of these traditions and be a little bit um, 
more effective at doing them. In general, it's usually a good idea to go down the discovery path in the early game or the expansion paths. Some of the other ones are useful for some of for some other scenarios as well, but it's completely species dependent. And in the early game, having a lot of surveying speed is a good idea because it allows you to move along the map a lot quicker. So we're going to go for discovery in this particular case, and I would highly recommend you to do the same thing. In the meantime, we have a bunch of alloys available, so we're going to take the opportunity to go to our shipyard and get ourselves another science ship up and running for more surveying even quicker we can check on our scientists the uh, challenge is uh, going pretty well they'll be done relatively soon and basically we have this bar moving along and our construction ship is on standby inside the system next to the star ready to put down a station as soon as this system has been surveyed as you can see on our outliner here, the Sol system is also doing a lot of cool stuff here with uh, building those ships. Now, we're going to go ahead and pause the game. If you remember last time, we were talking about the left side of the screen on the navigation bar. And uh, I mentioned that we would not go into much depth in that episode regarding this. This is now going to change. We are going to go ahead and go into our policy screen. On our policy screen, uh, we will see that there is a diplomatic stance. Diplomatic stance is effective change the way that we deal with everybody in the galaxy right now we are set to expansionist which is great for us because it means that we can build uh, new systems a lot quicker but it would also make other empires angry with us if we find them so right now being expansionist is very good however later on we will probably want to swap to co a cooperative these can all change depending on your situation if you want to swap to belligerent because it's something that you need or isolationist and it's because it's something you need then it's also a good way to to go. If you are one of the other types of empires, then mercantilist or supremacist or purification may be relevant to you, but for us, this is not all that important. Let's go ahead and speed up the game to fastest and wait until all the surveying has been done in the system. As our science ship comes off the production line, we're going to go ahead and assign a new leader. We don't have that many good options here, but having another scientist in the new worlds category is going to be helpful for a technology research and basically we're going to go ahead and make them survey a little bit more all along our uh, space and basically say okay we're going to go ahead and survey in this particular area and move on from there onwards it actually looks like that we have a very strong role right off the get-go uh, with only one choke point right in the uh, center here which is really nice because it means that we have only one major point of contact uh, to the outside galaxy now, after analyzing the system, it looks like that uh, we found some structures on this planet. It's called an abandoned amusement park. And basically, there's a little bit of fluff text and it tells us that we've generated a bunch of additional research points for our empire, which will automatically flow towards all of our research in the research category and basically start filling that up. And if we go to this planet, we can see that uh, there is not a lot of good stuff going on over here. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but still, there is not much that we can do about this we're just waiting for this last planet to be surveyed and as we can see this system has also now been surveyed it has a bunch of resources in it but it's not all that interesting for us uh, when it comes to expansion having an eye on what kind of resources you get from your systems is actually really important uh, we'll get back to that uh, that item shortly. Basically, uh, we have something called a Empire Sprawl modifier. And every single system that we control adds to the sprawl. Every single district on our, uh, on our planets, which we will go into the economy uh, video a little bit sooner, uh, has impact on our sprawl. If we go over this number, over 52, it means we will now start impacting the cost of certain things, mainly technology, but also tradition growth, traditions being this particular screen. And basically, if we go over this number, it basically means that we will uh, get into a situation where this is going to cost more. Therefore, colonizing, not colonizing certain systems is usually a good idea. So we may want to reevaluate whether or not we even want this system. Going back to this one, though, uh, we have ourselves something called Ancient Precursor Activity. Now, pre Ancient Precursor Activity is really, really nice because it means we can get a precursor. Precursors in the game are some of the species that came before us and they left uh, certain things 
for us to discover. They can be really good to uh, find out about early on because they can give us massive bonuses. However, because we want to know what is nearby, we're not going to do that just yet. We are going to ignore the precursor for now until our scientists are a little bit on a higher level because research time on this for this scientist would take three years. And three years is a very long time for us to spend, especially if we don't even know what is nearby. And now we've also confirmed that this is the only chunk point that we have, which is amazing. Regardless of that, it also means that we have now surveyed this system, which means that we can go ahead and select our construction ship either directly or through the outliner and click on the star and build a star base. Now, we can also do this on the map, so we have a little bit of flexibility there. Now, building a star base costs uh, both uh, alloys as well as the influence. Now, influence is a resource that we slowly gather over time and is also another reason why we may not want to go after some of these systems because it's a rather limited resource that doesn't grow all that quickly in the early game so we want to select our systems rather carefully this is a great system with a lot of resources in it which means it's a great initial system to colonize or at least not so much colonize but capture so we're going to go ahead and get that system online Meanwhile, Bernard Star is also being surveyed by all of our people, and this is going to be a very critical system as well, because it is on a position called a choke node. We've also discovered an archaeological site. We're going to ignore that for this particular episode, because we are covering vanilla mechanics, and arc sites are not part of the vanilla game. They are part of a expansion called Ancient Relics. So yeah, uh, we're not going to cover those for this one, especially not this one. The precursors do have their own archaeological sites that do come with the base game. So if we see them pop up, then that is generally pretty good. But like I said, we're going to ignore the precursors for now just to uh, keep things running. Regardless, we have just managed to control take control of this particular system and we can now spend our resources to get the resources in this system. Now, what we want to do here is, is we actually want to take a look at the resources that we have available here. So you can see this is a four mineral uh, resource and there's a three mineral resource over here. We generally want to go for the highest resources first because they have a better return of investment and the science we can do last because they all cost minerals to build. If you're going to go for, say, the uh, one of the other traditions uh, right off the get-go, building these stations is going to be cheaper but basically, this is all of our resources from space. In addition, there is a alpine world here. And this alpine world could be really beneficial to us in the future. However, we cannot colonize it. Why? Because we have a bad habitability on it. We are basically a species of continental preference, which means that alpine worlds are not good for us. However, this world by itself is actually quite good because it has both dust caverns on it, which allows us to get special resources from it, specifically um, the, um, the, the strategic resources. And it is a beautiful world, which means that it's high, high on unhappiness. And we will get into this uh, particular part of the game in the expansion and colonization episode. Regardless, we've got ourselves another tradition. What you pick is not really important as long as it goes into the general direction that you want to go into. I personally like to go for boldly go in this particular case because it increased the survey speed of our ships. And on top of that, our survey ships, if they manage to encounter alien life, will be able to disengage a lot easier. Uh, at this moment, it may be a good idea to get ourselves yet another science ship up and running. We are presented by the Habitable World Survey, which is always nice. It's a free little event chain right off the get-go, and it doesn't cost us anything. So we may as well. And uh, we should probably try to get ourselves another construction ship online. Now, our governor has now gained a trait. A governor... Oh, uh, they got a bad trait. Okay, so... Uh, a governor is basically a character that runs our sector. Sectors are part of the economy side of the game. We won't go too much into that for now. But regardless, they've gotten themselves stubborn, which means that they may need to be replaced. We can click on the governor themselves, try to recruit a new governor and see if there's any good traits that we can get. Usually architectural interest is pretty good, but we got ourselves intellectual, which is really nice too. So we're just going to go ahead and swap this leader out with something else. And we're just going 
going to go ahead and get over this one. Negative traits can be really, really bad. And we want to make sure that we do not have uh, negative traits on leaders early on so that we can avoid uh, not having them grow properly in the late game. Getting rid of leaders in the early game, especially have they, if when they have bad traits, is usually a good idea. And it does look like in the meantime that we found ourselves another exit point on our cluster, which is unfortunate. Now, in the meantime, though, our science fleet has managed to discover themselves a fresh cis uh, planet over here. A size pl uh, 20 arid world, which can be really interesting if we once again were for a uh, from a arid world, which we are not. Which means that we have the opportunity to terraform that later down the line. In the meantime, another event. We always want to make sure that we get the best possible result out of that. And once again, if they are hard events for similar to this uh, precursor one over here, then we usually want to avoid them in the early game. Uh, we can you find out how difficult they are by seeing the icon for a anomaly, which is this one, and the number that is next to them. We can also find them in the situation lock either by going to the button or hitting F2 and going to the anomaly tab and see what kind of anomalies are available to us and of course we will need to send out a ship over there find ourselves another routine anomaly which is great so we will go ahead and survey that and slowly but steadily we are finding out more and more about our uh, nearby area let's also take the opportunity to uh, finally start filling out the uh, the stations in our capital system because now we can go ahead and collect those resources and on top of that we have the uh, materials uh, in this particular system over here available for uh, extraction as well. We have also found ourselves a terraforming candidate. Now a terraforming candidate is a fascinating type of world because they are a type of planet that we can terraform from a rather bad world to a good world. Normally barren worlds are not colonizable, but in this particular case, this one can be. Think about Mars, for instance. Can it be terraformed? Probably. Do we need to wait until we have the right technology? Yes. Yes, we do. We can find this later on in our expansion planner by hitting either F5 or going to the tab and basically see, hey, we found ourselves a terraforming candidate here. They're difficult to track in the normal game. You will have to go to the expansion planner in order to find them properly. And as I was talking about Mars, yes, Mars is also a terraforming candidate, as you can see over here by this little icon, which is incredibly helpful as well. Looks like we found ourselves in another continental world, which is pretty exciting. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves some new research. Planetary unification is usually quite good. We're going to go ahead and get this mining station up and running, as well as this starbase over here. But something really important has just happened. We are about to find our first continental world. A continental world is, in this, in this case, really good because we are, in fact, a continental species, which means that this is going to be our first planet that we are going to be able to colonize. It's a size 18, and uh, our, our people are currently working on it to get it ready, which means that we can go to our shipyard and get ourselves a colony ship online. We can click on the type of ship that we want. It's a cost of 200 food, 200 uh, consumer goods, and 200 alloys. Thankfully, we have all of that stuff in the bank. We set the kind of species that we want, and we put it into production. Normally, we can also go through the planetary interface uh, to uh, basically say, hey, we want to colonize this particular planet. But it's usually a good idea to have a... Uh, uh, to have a colony ship on standby ready for colonization purposes because it will save us time and time is really important because we want to make sure that our first colonies come online as soon as possible as soon as that system becomes available we will go and have a deeper look at our first potential colony Okay, and we've got some more systems coming online. What we're going to go ahead and do is, is we're going to send this uh, this particular ship uh, towards an, uh, towards Alpha Centauri, this construction ship that is, and get it ready for the uh, claiming process so we can start colonizing at least Alpha Centauri. Now, one thing that is important is that we've just managed to get ourselves a unemployed pop on Earth. This is uh, defined here by the unemployment section. Now, what we can do here is we can give them a job, and usually what is a good idea early game is to get a research lab up and running. Research is one of the cornerstones 
components of the game, and you will need to make sure that you have as many labs as possible. In addition, if we go to the features button over here, we will see that we have these little things with red and uh, black and yellow bands around it. Those are called blockers. And blockers basically means that we have less space to build things on. And these are done through the districts. We'll get into the districts a little bit earlier. Uh, sorry, a little bit later on. But Sprawling Slums is one of the important ones here because it will give us an additional member of our population. So we're going to spend the 300 energy to remove this and at the same time build ourselves yet another research lab. Why another research lab? Because we can use those research labs to expand nice and effectively later on. In addition, we got ourselves some more research, so we're going to go ahead and get one of these, preferably a cheap one because these are not all that great. And we got ourselves another tradition and we're going to get ourselves, in this case, data bank uplinks to get better uh, research output from our stations. Uh, you don't need to do this. This is completely up to you. Make sure you read what they actually do. But our construction ship will be on our way towards Alpha Centauri very shortly, and we are going to go ahead and find out what is going on in this system and what we can gain from it. Because Alpha Centauri is right for the picking, our construction ship has arrived, uh, we need a little bit more influence, sadly, we need to wait two months in order to get all of this stuff up and running. This is why, for instance, that we didn't spend the resources over here earlier, because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to colonize Alpha Centauri. Interesting. Alpha Centauri B. Uh, we found ourselves a planet with a terraforming candidate modifier. That is very nice. So we've just found ourselves yet another terraforming ca uh, candidate, and it's got tidally locked, which can help us in the future. But it basically means that we have another potential planet that we can do something with later on. Once again, this is in the expansion planner if you need to find it. Still, though, it looks like we are ready to put our starbase out and then... Once we are at that stage, we can get our first colony up and running. Let's get ourselves some deflectors and get all of that stuff up and running, which is rather nice. We got ourselves the colony ship ready. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually start moving the colony ship uh, towards our Alpha Centauri 3 planet and our construction ship that is over here and has just finished uh, all the stuff in this system can start building all the buildings in this particular uh, system, which is great for us because it means that we can get more and more stuff going on. All right, we have managed to claim Alpha Centauri. Let's go quickly back to our colony ship and right click on Alpha Centauri 3. Now we have the option here to colonize and we can give it a name. However, what we can also do is, is we can go into the expansion planner, go to Alpha Centauri 3. As you can see, it has a lot of really good modifiers on it. It is exceptionally well suited to humans, 95% uh, habitability, it's basically Earth-like, plus it has high quality minerals, which means we can get a lot of good resources from this planet. However, it does not have a lot of food districts, which means it's not very good for food production, which is unfortunate, which is something we'll need to deal with later on. Regardless, though, we can go ahead and say, hey, we're just going to go ahead and click this button, go back to the expansion planner, go to Alpha Centauri and say, OK, here is the planet. Uh, Colonize the planet, okay, and give it a good name. Alpha Centauri Prime. Actually, I don't want to call it Alpha, Alpha Centauri Prime. Um, let's um, let's give it a nice name, uh, a cool name. There you go. That's going to be our planet, a cool name. And this is going to be a great industrial world for our species later down the line. So our colony ship will be starting to move in that direction, but not. this does not mean that we don't have other stuff to do in the meantime. We need to make sure that all of our ships are doing things, are being proactive. For instance, our construction ship should be starting to build the uh, stations in Alpha Centauri. All of our science ship are continue doing, uh, continuing to do all of these anomalies. And in the meantime, what we can do is, as well, we can take a look at our leaders and see if any of our leaders are at the point where we can send them over towards that precursor location. Uh, we got some stuff here. That's nice. Let's just quickly put this to the side. We would want to send this to our home world. But we've got our first colony being colonized. Yes. A cool name is being colonized in the Alpha Centauri system. This is a great day for our species. There is a little bit of fluff text, but yeah, 
a great day for our species. We get our first uh, colony and it will take a little bit of time before it is online, which we can see by this little bar over here. It will be online in approximately three years, a little bit less, and then we can start doing things on this planet. But yeah, an exciting time and a good a good place to end this video regarding initial expansion and how to deal with the various systems that are within the game. We've colonized our first planet. We have decided that we do not want to take this system just yet because we don't have the necessary influence for it and we would need to do all of that stuff. We have decided, found out that we have another choke node over here, which we're going to need to fortify. We know that there is another choke node over here. We have found ourselves a whole bunch of terraforming candidates which are going to be extremely useful in the future. So at this stage we can start to make the initial decision of are we going to play tall or are we going to play wide? These are some of the questions we need to ask ourselves and something that we're going to be talking about next time when we are going to settle our colony, or at least starting to develop it, um, finalizing our initial expansion and taking a look at the early economy within the game. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you want to have a refresher at some of the other basic mechanics of the game, here is the video on your screen regarding all of the basics, so feel free to go and check that out, and there is more stuff to be learned. I want to thank you, dear viewer. If you have any questions, if you want to know more, feel free to add a comment down below. And on top of that, thank you to my patrons for making this series possible once again. We've done these several times, and new mechanics are coming every single time, and you've been with us this entire time to... Uh, continue learning and that's exactly what we are all about here thank you so much for watching and until next time take good care of yourselves make sure you expand efficiently <laughs>